Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation to speak. It's such a wonderful event. It's great to see so many people here. I hope I don't bore you because I have no talk of gyms or six packs or any such thing for radiotherapy. Um, I'm going to talk about radiotherapy um, and how it's used to treat breast cancer. Um, first of all, we might talk about how radiotherapy works and how is it actually given. Um, then we might just discuss when it's beneficial in breast cancer, who benefits from it, what do we treat when we do treat with radiotherapy, and then some of the recent innovations in uh, breast cancer treatment in the centre in Beaumont where I work, as Arnie mentioned. So radiotherapy works by damaging the DNA inside cells. So Arnie showed a picture earlier of a cell, and inside a cell there's a nucleus, and your DNA is inside that. Um, and it's kind of the computer that runs the cell. So radiotherapy can actually damage your DNA. So if we look at the shape of the DNA, so it's kind of like a twisted ladder, and it can actually cause breakages in these strands and break the DNA molecules. So your normal cells can actually repair that kind of damage. They're quite good at that, because damage can occur for lots of reasons, not just radiotherapy. Whereas tumor cells, by definition, are not normal cells, they don't tend to be as good at repairing this type of damage. So you can actually kill the cancer cell by damaging the DNA within it. So it's not specific to a cancer cell. If you're treating an area where there is potentially cancer, you're also treating the normal cells in that area, and the radiotherapy will also affect those. That's why you can get some side effects. So on the skin, for instance, you may get some redness or some inflammation as a result of that. But those effects tend to settle because your body can heal itself. And that balance um, between the benefit and the potential side effects is what gives us the therapeutic effect of radiotherapy. So treatment is given usually using what's called a linear accelerator. That's this machine here. So this whole device can rotate around. You can position it at different angles. So you can aim an X-ray beam from the head of the machine at any part of the human body you want to treat by positioning the machine and by positioning um, the person who's going to have treatment. Um, so it's very important that that treatment beam is precise and accurately delivered. Um, so the delivery each day and the precision of that is one of the key things um, for how we treat patients. So the way we ensure that accuracy is we do what's called a planning scan for every person we treat. So we're not all the same size and shape. If we were, you wouldn't need the gym. There, I worked it in. <laughs> um, so we take a planning scan, and that looks like this. So if you've never seen a CT scan before, this is a picture as if we took a slice through the chest area for a woman who's having treatment for breast cancer. So these little marks here are where this woman has had a surgical procedure that has taken the cancer out of the breast. This is the rest of the breast on that side. You can see that the air outside this woman is black. The air inside her lungs is also black. So these black areas here are the lungs on both sides of the chest. This is part of the heart here in the center and the white bits are bone. So this is the vertebrae at the back and these are ribs. So we get quite detailed pictures of a, of a person's anatomy and we can map out where we want to treat um, with some degree of accuracy. So generally when this type of scan is done and when treatment is delivered, a woman would be in a position a bit like this. So lying down with both arms raised, resting on these um, cradles that hold the arms in place. So when you come for treatment each day, we have to get you back in that exact same position because the accuracy that we have in the computer when we do our nice fancy plan, which we'll look at in a moment, that won't matter if the accuracy isn't delivered each day on the treatment machine. So these scans allow us to map out where we want to treat. So I could sit down, for instance, and spend time actually drawing out these areas in the breast that we're trying to target. But we can also draw out areas we want to avoid, like the lung tissue or the heart. Um, and that means that for that particular person, for that particular anatomy, we can get the best possible treatment plan. So these wiggly lines of different colours are lines of radiotherapy dose. So they're a bit like lines on a map, contour lines on a map that tell you maybe the height of the land. We can modify the radiation plan to get this dose to land where we want it, to treat the target that we've outlined. In general, a typical way to do this would be to have a radiation beam coming from this side, and then that machine we saw earlier would rotate right around the patient, and you'd have another beam coming from this side. And that helps you get this smooth distribution of the treatment dose across the area that you want to treat. So that type of radiotherapy, called external beam radiotherapy, is typically given with a treatment each day, Monday to Friday. 
So it doesn't take very long. So to treat the type of plan we've just looked at, the actual treatment would only take two or three minutes, but the appointment time would be about 15 minutes because we spend 12 minutes making sure the woman is comfortable, that she's in the right place, that it's all lining up, and then you actually press the button to treat. So a typical course of treatment could be varying from three weeks to five or six weeks. So you can actually give a very similar dose in three weeks and in five weeks. If you do the maths on that, that means you're given a slightly bigger dose each day and you finish the treatment sooner if you do it over three weeks. And those have been proven to be equivalent in some very large clinical trials. But the best treatment depends on what exactly you're trying to treat. So we're not always just treating the breast area. Sometimes we're treating some lymph node areas and there are times when it's better to do it over a slightly longer course. If a woman has had a reconstruction, so some of the procedures that Barry was just talking about, we would tend to treat over the longer course. The logic of that is that perhaps because there's a reconstruction there, that would be a bit gentler on the components of the reconstruction. So it's very much tailored to the individual situation. If you were to walk into our waiting area and speak to 10 women, there would be slight variations in how treatment is done because it's individualized to that particular type of cancer and for that particular woman. So when is radiotherapy beneficial in the treatment of breast cancer? So if you have breast conserving surgery, so that's a surgery where they remove a lump from the breast, um, but the rest of the breast is left intact. So the rest of that breast tissue would be treated with radiotherapy. And that's the type of plan that we were just looking at, where we'd outlined the, the breast area for that particular patient. If someone has a mastectomy, we don't always need to give radiotherapy. There are situations when it is still beneficial, but not every woman who has a mastectomy would need radiotherapy. Um, so we sometimes would treat the chest area or a reconstructed breast area when someone's had a mastectomy. And then if lymph nodes have been affected by cancer, we may be treating some lymph node areas. So a breast cancer can affect the lymph nodes under your arm, um, and they're usually surgically dealt with. As Arnie mentioned, they usually do what's called a sentinel lymph node biopsy to identify whether there's any cancer in those lymph nodes. So if there is, they're usually dealt with surgically. So we tend to sometimes treat the lymph nodes just above that, behind your collarbone. Again, this is very much individualized to a particular situation. So why do we give radiotherapy? Um, so I'm often asked this question by women who've just come from Arnie Hill's clinic where he has told them, I've removed the cancer and it's gone. They come down to me and say, well, why, do I, why, do, why are you giving me treatment then? He said it was gone. So the reason we do it in breast conserving <laughs> surgery is there's very good evidence that you substantially reduce the risk of it coming back in the rest of the breast. And that's proven with long-term follow-up from many clinical trials. So the standard treatment would be to remove the cancer and then treat the rest of the breast with radiotherapy. It reduces the risk of it coming back. And women who are treated that way live longer than women who have that type of surgery without that radiotherapy. As I said, these benefits are well established out to 10, 15 and 20 years after treatment. Radiotherapy can cause some side effects. As a general comment, most women having radiotherapy feel reasonably well. If you met them walking down the street, you probably wouldn't know that they were currently getting radiotherapy. We think of the side effects in two ways. In the short term, it can cause changes in how you feel while you're getting the treatment. And very rarely, it can cause some changes that can be more long term. So in the short term, it can cause inflammation, so some redness in the skin or some sensitivity in the area that gets treated can cause skin dryness and occasionally skin peeling. It's rare to get a reaction that goes beyond that, but some women are more sensitive to radiotherapy than others. We're not all the same. So you can get a skin reaction that's more significant than that, that might need a bit of looking after. But these things tend to heal and settle down within two or three weeks after finishing radiotherapy. You can get fatigue. So we find, having looked in detail at fatigue studies in our department, that about one in three women will report the type of fatigue that interferes with their daily life where they say they're curtailing their activities a bit because they feel tired. Again, that does resolve after you finish radiotherapy, but can impact on quality of life during treatment. Changes in the long term are rare in the sense that rare that they would cause any significant issues. People do get cosmetic changes, and those are not health issues per se, but they're changes that a woman can see in the skin perhaps, which could be a slightly different colour. But modern radiotherapy is very safe and is associated with extremely low risks of any damage to the heart or the lungs, for instance. I'm often asked, for instance, if a woman has a breast cancer on the left-hand side, will this treatment damage my heart? And modern radiotherapy, the risks are very low. 
And we have some innovations that we can use to try and minimize those risks further, which we'll discuss in a minute. So research is constantly aiming at maximizing the benefit from these treatments while minimizing any associated risk. So we're aiming to improve the outcome. So can we do even better for our patients? while also can we deliver that better result with less in the way of side effects. So in terms of trying to improve outcome, we've taken part in studies where we look at the dose and we're, we're asking the question, if we change the dose, if we have an additional boost dose, will that give us a better long-term outcome? And when I say we're taking part in studies, these studies are usually international collaborative studies. As already mentioned, there can be thousands of women in breast cancer studies. So we take part in studies that are run by the major international collaborative research groups on a regular basis. And women in our department would have access to those because there's always at least one or two studies on the go. We also are involved in studies that help us identify who will benefit most from treatment. Um, so there are constant innovations to try and make sure that we treat the women who benefit the most and maybe identify women who are not going to benefit that we can confidently say we don't think that you need this additional treatment. In terms of minimizing side effects, we took part in studies recently comparing that three weeks and five weeks, the suggestion being that maybe, in fact, three weeks causes less in the way of side effects. And we're also involved in innovations that allow us to look at, can we treat less? So instead of treating the whole breast, can we just treat part of the breast, just that part where the cancer was? So that leads me on to talk about partial breast irradiation. So this is a recent innovation that's available in Beaumont. Arnie Hill and one of his colleagues, Mr. Power, and he was just saying that Barry was excited with his new toy. Well, he's very excited with his new toy, which I'll show you a picture of in a moment. So standard treatment is to treat the whole breast. But research has shown that if you have a very small breast cancer, so very early breast cancer, and you remove that, it may be enough just to treat that part of the breast. And in fact, there's pretty good evidence now that that probably is enough for a very particular type of breast cancer. So you have to choose the right type of breast cancer. It's not suitable for everyone. So this is Professor Hill's new toy here on the left. So it looks like this. This is a huge, big stand, a good deal taller than I am, that stands in theatre. But the business end is this tiny little applicator on this end. So this tiny little thing here can actually produce an X-ray treatment beam. So what happens is this little ball, which comes in different sizes depending on the situation, can be put into the cavity that Professor Hill creates when he takes out the tumour. So you're standing in theatre, the tumour has just been taken out, so now there's a cavity in the breast where that tumour was sitting, and if you have the correct size of a ball that sits snugly in that cavity, there's then a little x-ray beam delivered down <coughs> along this part of the tube, and it's distributed right around the wall of that cavity. So that, with great precision, can treat just the wall of the cavity and just that area of the breast where the breast cancer was. So the type of radiation beam that's produced doesn't travel very far. It only travels a few centimetres, in fact. So three or four centimetres out from that, the dose has fallen right off in this very minimal dose. So that treats just that part of the breast. And as I said, in particular situations, that may be all that's needed. And the huge advantage of this for a woman undergoing treatment is that in one procedure, the tumour is removed and she's had her radiotherapy. So she's potentially avoiding coming for treatment for three weeks afterwards, which would be the standard treatment. So innovations like this allow us to constantly tailor treatment for individual cases to give us that best possible therapeutic benefit. <coughs> one other treatment we've inter introduced in the last year is called Deep Inspiration Breath Hold, or DIBH for short. I want to be as good as Barry now with all that alphabet soup. Um, so these are scans of a patient, like the ones we just looked at, who's having radiotherapy on this left-hand side. So you can see that there's a breast here on the right, but that on the left, this lady has had a mastectomy. And we've decided to give radiotherapy to this area here on the left where that mastectomy was done. So the difference between this scan on the left and the one on the right is that in this one on the right, she took a big deep breath and we took the picture while she was holding her breath for 20 seconds. So we can track her breathing. We have a little box that's picked up by a camera system in the room that sits on the chest and we can actually see the breathing trace on a computer. And we have a little um, tablet screen that goes in front of her so she can see it too. So she takes a big deep breath and she can see herself that she's up where we need her to be and she holds that for 20 seconds. 
and we have a coaching practice session that people can do to get the hang of this. What that allows us to do is it's essentially a mechanical trick. So this is the heart here. So you can see the heart is quite close to that area where we need to treat. Whereas over here, the heart has actually moved. Now it doesn't look like much of a difference, but that's about three millimeters and that's about 12 millimeters. And moving the heart away by that much is enough to significantly reduce any dose that it will get from the radiotherapy plan. And you can see down here, if you look at this is the same woman, just in different, the pictures in a different orientation. If you see the size of the lungs here and the size of the lungs there, so the lungs have filled right up because she took a big deep breath. So when she comes for treatment every day, she has to take a big breath, hold it for 20 seconds. We treat her, she lets the breath out again. She might have to breathe in twice for us to get the full treatment done. But generally, people can manage that very well. And like I said, there's a coaching session to help them get the hang of it. So this helps us reduce dose to the heart. So this is just a technological innovation. We're constantly looking, can we reduce side effects down the line? So I'm going to stop there, and I realize I'm support for the main event, which is hard. <laughs>